His name used to be Mickey Featherstone, but that's not the one he's using now. Who he is now and where he lives is a secret, a secret from everyone except the federal marshals who look after him. What separates Mickey Featherstone from the thousands of other government informers living new lives in the witness protection program is that he's not your run-of-the-mill criminal. Mickey Featherstone is a killer who's been labeled a psychopath, and he is somewhere out there, maybe in the house next door to you. Besides all the killings now, there was hundreds of fights, not just fights, where I stomped people out, beat their heads in. I know one guy, I beat him so bad his eye came out. How many people have you killed? Since in Vietnam, I couldn't tell you. Since I'm home, six. The voice has been electronically altered, and we not only had to put him in shadow, but change his features with theatrical makeup. That's how concerned federal marshals are about protecting his new identity. What does Mickey Featherstone really look like? Ask one of the cops who spent a decade trying to put him behind bars. Sunday morning, look up in the choir loft. Mickey Featherstone's in that choir. Looks like a choir boy? Looks like a choir boy. A stone killer who looks like a choir boy. Joe Coffey was detective in charge of organized crime for the New York City Police Department when he first ran across Mickey Featherstone. The place was Hell's Kitchen tough working-class neighborhood of tenements and saloons. The streets were ruled by Irish gangsters called the Westies, who took their cues from old Jimmy Cagney movies and were known as the most violent gang in New York. How did Mickey Featherstone fit into all of this? Well, Mickey Featherstone was the muscle, the intimidator. He was the one, like, if you have a vicious dog and you don't want anybody on your property, you, you cut the dog loose, that was Mickey Featherstone. He was the vicious dog. You think he's crazy? Absolutely. Mentally ill. Absolutely. Over the years, a lot of psychiatrists have agreed with that assessment. In fact, Featherstone got off on three of his murders because courts and doctors found him to be insane. You've been described by psychiatrists at different times in your life as being a paranoid schizophrenic. Yes, sir. A passive aggressive personality with a, an acute impulse disorder. Yes, sir. Which means that you... I would swing at you in a moment. In a flash. Kill people on an impulse. Because you got angry at them. Yes, sir. You're not angry now. No. You tell me if you're going to get angry. Sure. But uh, there's nothing to get angry about. You do your job. So why would Mickey Featherstone want to talk to us? Why else? He's promoting a book called The Westies, which tells the story of his old gang and how they terrorized the west side of Manhattan. What frightened people most about Mickey Featherstone and the Westies was not just that they killed people, it was the way they did it. Ricky Tassiello was a small-time gambler who welched on a debt. In typical Westie fashion, he was shot in a Hell's Kitchen apartment, then cut up in little pieces. The body was never found. If there was no body, there's no case, no corpse, no case. The Westies do that a lot? Uh, yes, sir. Did it bother you? Yes, sir. I used to crack jokes about it because I got, I was the guy with the rep of being one of the baddest guys, and I'd get sick. What'd you do with the dismembered bodies? They were brought out to this place called, uh, we call it Tony's Island. And there's a part in the island where the current just moves very fast, and uh, they throw it in there. I don't know where you're living. Uh, but if I was living next door to you and found out that you were there and read the psychiatric reports and the rap sheet, I would be very nervous. I imagine so, sure. In fact, I'd probably call somebody and say, what is this guy doing out on the street? A free man. Yes, sir. I mean, that doesn't come to any, as any surprise to you, right? That attitude. No, I don't. I, it's understandable. Why would I? It'd be a surprise. I wouldn't blame the guy. So how does it happen that Mickey Featherstone is a free man living somewhere in America under the protection of federal marshals? Featherstone says his cronies in the Westies set him up for a murder he didn't commit. So he went to federal prosecutors and agreed to testify against this man, Jimmy Coonan, the Westies leader, Featherstone's lifelong friend, and the man Mickey says actually cut up all those bodies. What was it that made you go to the police? It was, uh, I felt my only way out of this life. You weren't just trying to save your own neck? Oh, yeah. Sure I was. You grew up in a neighborhood where 
the cops were the enemies, where the gangsters were the good guys. Yes, sir. Where the worst thing you could possibly do was talk to the police. About anything. About anything. Yes, sir. It's been hard for you? Sure. In what way? Well, my wife and I have lost our families. We'll never see them again. Mine has cut me loose. Why? Because of what we've done, cooperate. We were raised, you don't do this, and uh, we are doing it. It was all right if you were a murderer and an extortionist, a hitman, uh, but they cut you off when that you started cooperating with the police? Yeah, that confuses me, too, but my family. When I was a bad guy, they bad-mouthed me. Now that I'm supposedly with the good guys, they don't even want to know me. Jimmy Coonan, based on Mickey Featherstone's testimony, now resides in Leavenworth Prison, serving a 75-year sentence on federal racketeering charges. The jury, the jury that, that convicted, convicted and expected the same thing, thing to happen to Mickey. Mickey. They'd, They'd been told he'd entered a plea of guilty to similar charges and was facing 20 years in prison. But in, in the end, end, after the jury had gone home, Mickey didn't, didn't get 20 years. years. He didn't, he didn't get, get 20 days. He didn't, he didn't even get 20 minutes. minutes. Federal Judge Robert Sweet, after hearing reports from a psychiatrist and federal authorities involved in the case, said he believed Mickey Featherstone was a changed man. The sentence was probation, an outrage to Jerry Shargell, who was Jimmy Coonan's defense lawyer. Jimmy Coonan, for similar conduct on which he was convicted, was sentenced to a prison term of 75 years. And the, according to the government's view, they were, they were in, in pari delicto. In the government's view, they were birds of a feather. That's what the government said. One bird gets 75 years and another gets probation. It's unconscionable. Shargell, an experienced New York criminal lawyer, says prosecutors will make deals with anyone willing to say exactly what they want to hear on the witness stand. The danger of this is that the message will go forward to courtrooms, to prison cells throughout this country that no matter what you've done, no matter who you've killed, no matter what law you violated, shake hands with the government and you can walk out free. That's a very dangerous message. We asked former U.S. Attorney Rudolph Giuliani, the judge, and all of the prosecutors involved with the case for interviews. But none of them would go on camera to defend their deal. We, unfortunately, in the law enforcement area and the prosecutorial area, have to shake hands with the devil once in a while. The end justifies the means. Now, if Featherstone doesn't cooperate, we, as a community in law enforcement, don't get Jimmy Coonan. So, was it worth it? Yes, absolutely. Even if Mickey Featherstone is living out there a free man, and even if maybe someday he kills somebody else. Well, that's another matter. I, I separate the two. That guy should be in. Give him a call to television set. Uh, let him live in a cell that's carpeted, but don't put him out in the street. In fact, not even federal marshals with a witness protection program wanted Mickey out on the streets. They thought he was too dangerous and belonged in an institution. They finally agreed to take him on the condition he received psychiatric treatment. After I was sentenced, the judge wanted me to see a psychiatrist. I'd seen him for several months when I first went home, about six or seven months on a regular basis. And he said, I didn't have to come back anymore, and I'm fine. Without having a professional experience, I, I, I don't think that paranoid schizophrenia, schizophrenia is uh, something that uh, goes away. Does it bother you that he's out there somewhere in the United States living under a new name? Should it bother the general public? If the general public knew, and by this program, I guess the general public will know what Mickey Featherstone has done uh, I wouldn't want to be the guy fighting Mickey Featherstone for a parking space. How closely do you think the federal marshals are watching? Knowing the program as I know it, not close at all. Not at all? I would say not. They put you out there and they uh, change your name. They give you a new driver's license. They give you a social security card. They get your job. Uh, but they're not on them. 24 hours a day, or even eight hours a day, or even five hours a day. They haven't got two marshals living in the garage, no, or absolutely somebody not. watching from the corner. They're, they might meet with him maybe once a month, or maybe once every two weeks. And if something goes wrong, who bears the responsibility? Whoever let him out. The judge. The feds. 
I don't think the feds uh, like the idea that he's out in the street either. The judge? I would say so. See, Mickey has a way about him. Like I said, he's a quiet boy. He's got that. He can con you. He might have conned the judge. Were you surprised it was so lenient? Yes, I was. I was shocked. I thought I was going to get some time. You've got a history of murder, in and out of jail. Never held really a job in your life for very long. No, sir. Just as a team stood for 21 months. Forgive me, but you don't seem like the ideal candidate for rehabilitation. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm rehabilitated. That's all I can tell you. I don't have uh, the hatreds I used to have. I'm not violent like I was. What's to stop you from getting into a, uh, an argument with somebody over a parking place in a shopping mall? What do you mean, arguing over a spot? I'd pull out, let them have it. <laughs> let them keep it. Find another one. Suppose somebody came up to you, pushed you, called your name, took a swing at you. I gotta walk away. It's, it's mandatory. I don't want no more trouble in my life. Some people thought I wouldn't last a couple of months out there. I've been home 13 months, living a good, clean, decent life. And, uh, I'm not the violent guy that I was in the past. Hope so. I hope so for the people in the community he's living in now. What do you think the chances are that there's going to be a happy ending here, that Mickey Featherstone is going to become a productive member of society? What are the odds? 100 to 1. 